Okay, I have in my hands here, finally, the Apple MacBook Pro 13-inch with their first release M1 processor. And unfortunately, I'm going to send it back. I've been having to do that a lot this year. And it's not because something like this MacBook is fundamentally flawed in a way I think everybody should send it back. But for me and my use case and the way that I operate, it's just not the right time. Yes, the M1 chip is amazing. It is so crazy and fun to run iOS apps like Instagram or Robinhood or Dark Sky like natively on the OS. That is so cool to see them right here on my desktop. And the performance is very snappy. I don't think I've ever heard this thing uh, turn the fan on once, which I really, really like. The two ports don't even bother me that much. Uh, it's the perfect size and build. It's a fantastic machine. At the end of the day, I'm sending it back because I use more than one computer in my household. And I knew the M1 chip had to be a little bit too good to be true. Apple, the company, has certainly demonstrated that they will seed uh, early release stuff to, to Apple chosen tech reviewers that are likely to gloss over or just not fit the niche that is going to care about a giant missing feature that is super critical to uh, my workflow and I think should be a part of everybody's workflow if you use, if you regularly oscillate between more than one machine. And that missing feature is target disk mode. Now, if you're on my Patreon, you've probably heard me talk about it a lot. And if you still haven't implemented target disk mode, I highly recommend you do that because it makes life so much easier. Not just if you're using uh, Lightroom on two different machines, but if you're doing audio sessions through Logic, or if you're doing videography through DaVinci Resolve or something like that, target disk mode completely saves you from having to copy these giant catalog files, these giant massive folders of data from one computer to the other, or it saves you from having to use giant external hard drives for everything. And with the Apple M1 chips, they had to do away with target disk mode. They did replace it with something I thought would be really great, which is called sharing mode. To enter sharing mode, you just reboot the machine uh, holding the power button. It'll prompt you for different recovery or sharing options after a second or two. So I was already kind of annoyed because that is a less elegant way to enter this sharing target disk mode than what used to be the case. And I'll show you at the very end of this video how I implement target disk mode. Be great if the computer turned on. There we go. So all you do is keep holding this button and it'll load your startup options. Now, target disk mode, I think, has sort of been written off as a feature that only IT people use to batch you know, uh, set up computers or maybe recover things that have cr had a critical error, but it literally lets your computer function as an external hard drive. And it shows up as an external hard drive that's been plugged in, which is a fundamentally different relationship uh, for your OS to be talking back and forth to the computer. With this new M1 chip, you only get this new feature called share disk. So you just pull up share disk, you choose your hard drive, and you hit start sharing, and that's it. And that might seem like, okay, what's the difference? The fundamental difference is that when you enter sharing mode like this, it shows up on whatever computer you connect it to over Thunderbolt, as a network attached sharing drive, which causes a ton of issues. There's no way to trick it into thinking it's a local drive. It shows up as network attached storage and you can't launch the Lightroom catalog saved on this machine on my iMac Pro when it's mounted that way. It just, it literally says cannot launch network attached storage. With my older MacBook, in target disk mode, it does let me launch and it shows up as an external hard drive and it, there's no issues at all. The other big thing, the huge benefit to doing target disk mode and using a two computer setup like this is that if you use an unlimited service like Backblaze, they also prohibit you from backing up <laughs> Right, uh, smartly so, they prohibit you from backing up a network attached storage drive to their unlimited monthly backup plans. But with target disk mode, it shows up as local attached storage, just like a regular external hard drive. You can back up your entire extra computer, your entire extra laptop through Backblaze using target dis disk mode. Not the case with the M1 chip. And that's a real, and that's a real tragedy. 
you know, from a technical IT perspective, sharing mode probably solves what they thought uh, most people would need in terms of connecting one computer to the other. But target disk mode has saved me countless hours and provided a really dead simple, easy way to float back and forth between computer systems. Again, this isn't something that has just worked for my Lightroom catalog. Um, I also do a ton of song rating and I tried mounting. So I keep all my song projects on my laptop. So if I need to go record somewhere away from my home, which is often, I can eject my laptop from my iMac Pro and I can open my logic files that are all saved on this machine, um, you know, out in the field or whatever. Uh, but I did that. I saved all my projects locally. I booted this up in sharing mode. It let me open the logic file, but it wouldn't let me save. It said, you don't have permission to save. I played with permissions a bit. And what do you know, it deleted my entire project. If I hadn't had it backed up, I literally would have lost 40 hours of work. Using network attached storage causes a ton of fundamentally uh, tricky situations, which is another reason why I don't I don't really like recommending NAS systems like the Synology, stuff like that. The, the least prone to having issues um, on with any type of externally accessed access storage is almost always going to be a direct USB or direct Thunderbolt connection to the system. Target disk mode allows for that. Sharing mode does not, and it's a deal breaker for me, and I'm terrified because eventually all Apple computers are gonna be using this, and I'm just picturing myself in a world of having to copy files back and forth between machines again, and it just sounds like a generation ago that I had to think about that kind of stuff. Um, so that is enough of a deal breaker for me, as good as the M1 processor is, and again, I do recommend upgrading, and, and you'll be fine if you only have that one computer as your main workhorse. But if you use two computers, you should be using target disk mode. Um, I'll show you in just a second how it works uh, because it's extremely elegant. But yeah, it's enough of a, a deal breaker for me. This is going back, I'm really sorry to say. And there's no signaling from Apple that target disk mode is ever gonna be a thing again. Um, so that's where I'm leaving it. Um, Hopefully you found this helpful. If you hadn't heard of target disk mode, uh, check it out. I'm gonna take my phone right now and just walk down to my office and show you exactly how it works. Um, it is so nice to just have all your mission critical files, all your catalogs, whatever it is on your laptop at all times, and then open that through, you know, your more powerful iMac or whatever your secondary computer is. It just works beautifully. So thank you so much for your attention. Let me know if you have any questions or if you've discovered anything. Um, I will say uh, in a final wrap up, the new keyboard is lovely. I, I really really, really enjoy it. And I absolutely love Big Sur. The new operating system is fantastic. And I haven't had any issues with Lightroom or any of my um, apps being, uh, you know, incompatible. So thank you so much for your attention. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. So for anybody that hasn't tried it yet, I want to show you uh, just how handy target disk mode is. So out of the nice, clean recording studio area <laughs> that I usually make my videos and into my actual desk, which is very messy. Okay, so there's a few different ways you can enter target disk mode. And again, even if you're not a photographer, which probably most of the people I have watching this video are, uh, even if you work in audio, video, whatever, this is the most elegant way I have been able to come up with. I've been using it for years and it's sort of been hit or miss in terms of reliability, but in the most recent version of Mac OS uh, before Big Sur, uh, Catalina, it's worked rock solid. Uh, it's not like it ever corrupted or did anything too, too uh, problematic, but it, on older versions, um, I would find that I would try and mount it and it just wouldn't show up for whatever reason. Uh, but they really streamlined, all you have to do is go to uh, system preferences and select a startup disk here. Um, you can actually just, if you have preferences down here, you can just click and hold that and just go to startup disk. So that's even one step fewer. Uh, unlock this sucker, use my fingerprint, and just say boot in target disk mode. And it says right here, after you start this computer, you can connect it to another computer using Thunderbolt or Firewire and use it as a hard disk. And that's essentially what it does. Um, I keep all my actual catalogs, my databases for DaVinci, my logic, files, all of that on this machine uh, locally, uh, my smart previews, my standard previews, all that stuff. And as this reboots, actually, I'll wait and show you. Normally, I close it at that point because you don't have to do anything else. But once it reboots, you'll see a little Thunderbolt or Firewire icon floating around. That's it. And then you just have to simply plug it into whatever other external computer you want over Thunderbolt. After 10 seconds or so, you'll be prompted with this uh, cannot be unlocked, but it actually can. And this is why I think Apple has never really promoted 
target disk mode, it's like a huge security loophole. <laughs> um, now, here we go. These are the uh, partitions of my MacBook Pro sitting right there, fully accessible and able to be accessed through my iMac. And the performance isn't throttled either. Like I get all the speed and processor, all the benefits of working on my iMac Pro. The only bottleneck is uh, Thunderbolt, which is very fast. It's certainly fast enough. I don't think you get true Thunderbolt speeds, but here you go. I can browse the entirety of my computer. And then I just have, of course, you know, aliases set up on my desktop to access uh, you know, without having to click through every single time where everything is. And then the other huge benefit is that Backblaze, uh, if you do any online backing up into the cloud, uh, Backblaze restricts you from choosing network attached storage drives. Uh, rightfully so, they don't want people to abuse their system, but booting through target disk mode, it, they show up purely as external drives here. And so you can flag this entire computer to back up over Backblaze and also this entire computer to back up over Backblaze. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you start using target disk mode if you have it at all. It should work on any Intel Mac uh, over Thunderbolt, Firewire, and not USB. USB will not work. Uh, the other way you can enter target disk mode that I'm not gonna show you is when you're booting your computer up from shutdown, when it's totally off, you just hold the T key and it will, after, I don't know, 10 seconds, blink those same icons and let you boot into target disk mode uh, without having to do anything through the menu. So uh, highly recommend this. This has been uh, just a dream for my workflow and my sanity. And just I'm far less likely to get any corruptions or make mistakes, not having to keep track of what copy is on which machine. So hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.